love this place. A small Midwestern town, a drab, dusty hotel. Warren and Hildy are behind the front desk examining the ledger book. I don't know how much longer we can hold out, love. A month or two at most. I was hoping we could make it to the summer season. <laughs> what summer season? There wasn't any last year, and gasoline is going up again. Nobody wants to visit the heartland anymore. And if they did, why would they come here? So what do we do? I can't see selling the hotel. It's been in your family forever. Huh? I can't see anyone wanting to buy it. And I don't want to sell it. I love this place my father's built. This dusty grand hotel. For that remains a them for me. Memories it's If we stay here, we'll be struggling till we die. It'll be hard, but... Oh! Oh! Jason enters oh, the front yeah. counter, pulling a small overnight bag. Uh, uh, yes, how may I help? Uh, yeah, um, I need a room for the night. I'm sick and tired of driving. Don't you folks have any decent motels around here? Oh, oh nothing as nice as a palace. Unfortunately for you, some of our best rooms are available. <laughs> what you looking for exactly? A hot shower, a good steak dinner, and a king-size bed. Huh. Well, sounds like you'd be wanting the presidential suite. <laughs> presidential? Abraham Lincoln, maybe? <laughs> Actually, Warren G. Harding. I was named after him. Warren Zimmerman. And you are uh, Lafleur Enterprise, New York and Chicago. Jason Lafleur, how much did you say that room was? Oh, the presidential suite is 150 a night. You're kidding! In this hick town, 
That's ridiculous. I'd rather keep driving. Oh, well, please, I'm sure we could work something out. I'll give you a hundred dollars for the night and not a cent more. Cash on the barrel. Jason pulls out a hundred dollar bill out of his wallet and lays it on the counter and Warren puts it in his pocket. Or you're getting a real steal. But here's your key, room 306, just down the hall and up the stairs to the top floor. I'm sure you'll enjoy the amenities. Okay, where's the elevator? Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, no elevator. What? Oh, I'll be glad to carry your bag up. I should think so. Well, you come in and, and make that a good piece of uh, meat for dinner, a prime ribeye. Oh, yes, sir. Warren follows Jason down the hall. Paints the dark briefly, then lights up in front where Hildy is examining the ledger. Warren returns from the hall. Well, I who'd have thought I'd be glad to see some jerk from New York. <laughs> Look at this. Our own personal portrait of Benjamin Franklin. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Who do we pay first? Well, Mr. Big Shaw wants a ribite for dinner. I'll go see Carl, give him what we owe, uh, well, some of it, and buy that steak. In fact, I'll get a couple, just in case. Sounds good. Say hi to Carl and Manda for me. Will do. Warren leaves out front as Hildy exits. <laughs> Warren wanders down the main street to butcher shop and then enters. The chime rings and Carl enters from the back of the shop. Hi, Warren. <laughs> How's it going for you and Hindley? It's been, it's been slow here. Sure, which business has been up? Oh, me too, Carl. It's been rough on all of us. Carl, I'd like a couple of nice ribeye steaks. Uh, wouldn't we all? <laughs> I can't tell everyone. I just can't handle any more credit. So, sorry, buddy. I think until you pay your bill down some, no can do. Well, how's this for a start? Ooh-wee. Jeez, I haven't seen one of these for a long time. Won't ask where you got it. Quite a man was good old Ben, a hero for both now and then. Came in lightning with a kite, giving redcoats quite a fright. Philosophizing far and wide, spouting wisdom to thought we died. A penny saved, he one time said, a penny earned, a cent ahead. Early to bed, early to rise, makes man healthy, wealthy, wise. That's why us country folks are so damn rich. <laughs> so celebrate this best of men. Honor his image now and then. His present brings us true relief. From trouble and death and looming grief. <clears throat> a ray for Ben, may his numbers grow into our pockets may they flow. That we may repay those we owe, for we shall reap as we do so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, never a wrap before. <laughs> well, back to business. I don't have any ribeyes cut right now, at least. It's not good enough for you. I'll have them over to the hotel in plenty of time for dinner. Does that work? Oh, sounds good. And, and Hildy said to this, tell Mandy we said hi. For sure, and thank you. My pleasure. That was fun. Warren exit and returns <coughs> to the hotel. Hey Chuck, I'm going out to get a side of beef from Marlowe, back at 15. Carl wipes off his hands, takes off his apron, and leaves out front. Going down Main Street to the edge of town and Arlo's front door where he knocks. After a moment, Arlo opens the door. Say, hi, Arlo, I'd like to... Don't let Addie hear us. She's on a tear today. Seems like she's on a tear every day. <laughs> so what do you want? Who's that you're talking to, Arlo? Don't you go giving anything else away. Yeah, here's that hundred I owe you. <laughs> Answer me! Thank you, I really need this. It's just Carl Klosterman, dear. We have almost done. Sweet Adeline, here once was mine, but that's 
Uh, is Warren here? What do you want with my husband? Oh, well, aren't we touchy? Actually, <laughs> no do. I just wanted to pay off my bill and to rent a room for tomorrow afternoon. Oh, if I, damn if I didn't need money so bad. <laughs> we women all need money, dearie. We just get it in different ways. <laughs> or maybe it's the same way. How dare you. <laughs> Shows Warren the one hundred dollar bill, and, <laughs> and I had to take it. I even had to rent her a room for tomorrow for the money. I hate it. I hate it. When we move in here, I don't want that floozy in my hotel ever. Oh, now, Hildy, well, just slow down. Maggie's not a bad person. She's just trying to get by, like us. But not like us. Oh, you're right, dear. Sorry. <laughs> Warren picks up the bill from the counter, looks at it, puts it back. You know, this could be the same bill we got earlier. Changing the subject. You didn't give that to her, did you? No, I, I, I don't fool around on you, honey. Never have. I told you, I paid Carl for the ribeye for Mr. Big Man from New York's dinner. So maybe Carl. No, I can't see him doing that to Amanda. No, he, he probably needed it to, used it to pay somebody like we did. And somewhere down the line it got to Maggie. None of our business. <laughs> well, we'll find out soon enough. Whoever shows up in that tomorrow afternoon. Jason comes down the hall from the back rolling his back. That room... A uh, problem, Mr. LaFleur? Uh, can I help you with something? That room is not at all what you told me. I can't imagine even a bad president staying there. <laughs> I'll find something else. Jason sees the bill on the counter, picks it up, stuffs it in his pocket, and continues to the front door. Stop! You can't take our money. Sorry, lady, I'm not using the room, so I don't pay for it. Uh, you might want to clean up the bathroom. I had to take a shower. <laughs> Most unsatisfactory. Jason continues out the door and down the street with Warren and Hildy following. Crave the bright lights so they 